This video shows you how to strip your wire and then subsequently how to wire your wall plug. So first I will be using my Stanley knife to undo the cable ties, you know, in order to retrieve the cable and wire stripper that's, you know, in the packaging. You know, it's a quick strip cable and wire stripper, so it should save you time, you know, when stripping your wires, you know, to, to, to get the conductors out of the um, insulation. And if we zoom out or get the, the um, cable stripper a lot closer, you know, we can sort of like work out how the mechanism works. So them two grips or lever latch onto the wire at the top. The bladed grip on the right hand side gives it a round fine cut and the toothed grip on the left hand side, you know, sort of like strips the, the bare wire naked. Or by dragging the sheath or the outer layer further away from the, you know, the bladed grip. So the bladed grip on the right, you know, cuts the wire at top and bottom, holds the wire in position and pulls it to the right. Whereas the two-third grip on the left holds the wire firmly, you know, grips it really firmly and pulls it to the left. The simultaneous action of both the right grip and the left grip strips the wire and then subsequently adjust, you know, the tension knob to suit the wire thickness. The wire cutter at the bottom end, you know, cuts the naked wire. And at the stripper or clipper handle, you've got the wire cutter and, you know, three toothed slots. The first toothed slot is used for crimping thick wires or fork connections. The second slot for medium wires or spade connections. And the third slot for bullet connections or thin wire. So just like here, you've got the fork connection in yellow in the first slot. The male blue spade connection in the second slot. And the male red bullet connection in the third slot. And so each of the um, individual toothed slots are used for crimping, you know, both the male and the female connections. And so say, for example, insert, you know, the male red connection into its female connection, then crimp it with, you know, the um, third toothed slot. And you can basically use the wire cutter there to trim naked wires. And so now that we know how the mechanism works, we're going to place the wire into the jaws of the cable stripper. And, you know, basically one half of the jaw, presumably or supposedly, is half an inch as it reads, you know, on the scale. If you latch the scale of the wire stripper against the measuring tape, you can see that one side of the jaw is capable of taking about half an inch of, of cable or wire, depending on how you read it. You know, you just take into account the error of parallax, you know. Your reading may be skewed by 0.1 of an inch, you know, on either side, depending on how you read it. So just shut one eye when you read it because parallax is more inclined as the object get, gets closer to your eyes. The cable and wire stripper is capable of stripping wires with a diameter of 0.2 to 6 mil. And you can also see on the spectrum gauge of the stripper that the jaws line of travel runs anywhere between 10 millimeter to 24 millimeter depending on where you place your wire. And so Core Electrics have done a very good job of providing you with a, with a spectrum scale to work with. So the top part of the scale is in Imperial and the bottom part of the scale is in Metrics, okay? So basically top part of the scale in line with the left jaw is in Imperial. And the bottom part of the scale, you know, in line with the left jaw is in Metrics. And, and you can see that the arrowhead, you know, on the stripper is at the 10 mil mark when it latches on to the measuring tape and extends all the way to 24 mil you know at the end of the two-third left jaw and so if you extend the wire length or gauge to its maximum threshold or its desired length you can prep to strip a cable anywhere between 21 to 24 mil approximately which is you know the maximum threshold for the yellow gauge cable length but when you've actually got your cable in there, you will be only able to strip, you know, up to 11 mil, okay, at a time, okay, despite the fact that you've got about 24 mil of cable length, you know, in the jaws. And so now that you understand how the um, strip up works, we can proceed to strip a cable, okay? And so the next stage would be to strip off the insulation, you know, off of the um, wire.
the first step would be to place the wires you know in the jaw of the um, cable stripper so here I'm not worried about you know the length of the cable as this is just for demonstration purposes if the insulation doesn't come off quite easily because it's quite soft you know you can repeat and reproduce the process up until you know you strip off the insulation and also remember to utilize the tension to suit the wires thickness if need be and you can see that the first insulation stripping didn't strip all the way through so I'll repeat and reproduce the process and you can see during the second run we've got more naked wire okay so we can take out you know the insulation at the top pin the wire add them two jaws if you need more naked wire and strip it open okay whatever length of naked wire you need okay so you can take out you know the top part of the insulation or you can roll you know the top part of the insulation and before taking off the um, the top insulation or you can just take off you know the top part of the insulation and roll the stranded bits together okay well, whichever you choose it's perfectly fine okay and if you find out that you know the naked wire length is too long you can trim the naked wire with the wire cutter okay so just get them three bits you know in between them twisted strands and you know just cut the naked wire with the blade okay and like I said previously you can use the gauge as a guide you know to cut the the desired cable length that you desire and so if I set my cable in between them jaws right before the gauge I know I'll be getting like an 11 mil strip of naked wire repeat and reproduce the process again if the strip is inadequate and if you've got one piece of wire with a piece of insulation lagging behind, you do not need to strip off all three wires at the same time. You can strip off one of them wires to get off the, the insulation, as exemplified here. So, repeat and reproduce the process until you get the desired length of naked wire that you want. You can achieve the desired length by utilising the gauge that comes with your cable or wire stripper. Or you can cut an X length of wire, then subsequently trim them wires in the wire cutter as shown here. Okay, so cut to, to whatever length you want, then trim with the um, wire cutter. Okay, if you cut stranded wires, you get loads of strands all over the place. But you know, if you twist them wires, you might get stacks of wires as opposed to strands of wires in your test cell or in your workstation you will develop you know the skills um, needed for stripping wires as you continue to practice or you continue to use the stripper if you get stuck you know one of the wires doesn't strip properly or if your insulation is quite soft and would not readily come off the naked wire repeat and reproduce the process until you achieve that length and if your wire by every right so is, is too long then you can trim the wire off and utilizing your wire cutter and so pretty much the action of the cable or wire stripper suggests that you know it doesn't necessarily cut the, the insulation it pulls it apart okay but you know when the insulation strip it comes off it appears like it, it's been cut but it hasn't you know it's actually been pulled apart okay the blade of one of the jaws cuts slightly in okay and the two third jaw you know holds it into position whilst you strip or pull the insulation apart and if you want to see how to wire up you know your three point mains plug um, click on the link in the description the next stage of having you know stripped off you know the insulation from the naked wire would be to wire up you know a 240 volt uh, mains three point plug i will need a thick wire that fits right into the mains plug but i wouldn't need it to be extensively long and so i would have to trim the wire short if you've got your three pin already inserted into your plug you know that's fine but if you haven't you can insert them into the original positions into two so that's the longest bit there just make sure it's flush you know um, when it sits into that socket or slot so if it's standing further up you know twist it around or spin it around and you know slide it back in, into the slot it should be flush there okay and that's pretty much your earth pin sorted you know you've got two other shorter pins to insert you know the shorter pin on the left is your neutral c is shorter than the um, earth pin okay 
and also when inserting make sure you know it's um, flush okay both the um, earth pin and the um, neutral pin okay if it's standing outwardly twist it around and insert it back into the slot make sure it's flush you can see N stands for neutral, E stands for earth and L on the right hand side stands for live, okay? The live pin, you know, is attached to a 13 amp fuse, okay? So when your plug blows out as a result of a short circuit, sometimes all you need to do is just to change the fuse after fixing your device from the resultant short circuit. So if you've got an old plug that's got a 13 amp fuse, you could insert it and that should um, resolve the problem, okay? If you've got a blown out fuse, but basically this is your live pin okay and so your earth wire you know comes in a green and yellow um color denoted by e on the plug and goes at the top topmost part okay the shot up pin on the left is your neutral and comes in black or blue and whilst you know the pin on the right is also a shot up pin and comes in a red or brown and that's your live um wire okay and sometimes, you know, if the inscriptions are not evident, you can always work out what wires go, goes where by using logic to remember that your blue and black neutral wires have got L as the second letter and should be on the left hand side, as opposed to in contrast to your live wires, which are brown or red, which have got, you know, the letter R in them and should be on the right hand side, okay? which essentially are your live wires so basically i will be rewiring you know the plug here if you haven't got you know enough space for your thick wire to go in you know open up the knots there and once you've got your wires um, sliding through which in this case is your earth wire tighten you know the knot back onto the pin repeat the same process for the neutral wire which is a blue wire here it goes on the left hand pin which is one of them shot up pins you know you, you can push the, push the, the pin out, you know, open up the knot if there isn't enough space, you know, chuck the wire in and screw the, the knot back onto the pin, okay? Repeat the same process for the live wire, which is your red wire, okay? Screw down the knot, you know, onto the pin. And, you know, if you haven't got enough traction with a screwdriver, change the screwdriver to a bigger one and, you know, make sure that you talk tighten or hand tighten, you know, the screws onto the pins. Once you have established that all of the knots have been tightened onto the pins, the next step would be to um, safeguard, you know, the flex on the wire. So basically securing the sheath and making sure that, you know, um, when you yank, you know, the wire or the, or the plug that, you know, it doesn't just, you know, pull on, pull on straight onto the um, pins. And so we will be screwing, you know, a black plastic on the underside um, with two screws to secure, you know, the wire. Um, into position or the flex so basically tucking them two screws through the back of the plug through the plastic to secure the sheath onto the plug you know in between um, the black plastic and the plug sort of like mesh it there but pretty much safeguard it from moving back and forth the next step of the process would be to make sure that the wires are sat in the plug properly so that you can close out, you know, the cover of the plug. And, you know, also just to make sure that, you know, you can separate them as, as distinctly as possible. So that if, if there is a melt or a short circuit in the plug that both wires, when they melt, don't touch each other. But in this case, I can't really do it because um, the wires are sort of like long, okay? So the best I could do here is just make sure that they're sitting, you know, properly in the in the plug, okay? Shouldn't be a problem. I've got insulation in there to protect the naked wires from um, rubbing or touching each other and thereby causing a short circuit. So now basically I'll just be, you know, coupling the plug back together, you know, top tightening um, the bigger knot, you know, onto the front and the back side of the plug. And your device or appliance is ready to use. And just remember that, you know, when you get your plug into the socket, because you've twisted your plug around, your live is on the left and your neutral is on the right hand side on the socket itself. OK, especially if, if you're into fault finding and you're sticking, you know, live and neutral wires without the earth, you know, into your socket. Remember, you should be using a 13 amp fuse to help with short circuits, such protection and spikes. OK. So if for testing purposes you decide to use naked wires, be very careful. Don't mix up, you know, life and neutral. Do not try it with naked wires if you're not certified. Always use the recommended plug with the with the um fuse in there, okay, for, for your safety, okay?
And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share, helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.